Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. And happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. A special welcome to our online worshiping community this morning and our streaming team that makes their presence with us possible. If you would turn with me to the back of your bulletin, I want to draw your attention to some announcements. There's a lot going on in the next few days. So um, a reminder that this Friday at 11.30, we will gather in Thanksgiving for the life of Sally Gillespie at 11.30 here at St. Columbus. The following day, sat Saturday, will be an important workshop for the larger community that we are hosting here in our parish hall, a SCAM workshop. Representatives from the district attorney's office will be here to help us all learn how we can be aware of and avoid scams. There's information about that and how to sign up. Also that day, up the road in Santa Barbara, Sister Joan Chittister will be at Trinity Church Santa Barbara. There's information about that in your bulletin. And the following day, Sunday, at Camarillo United Methodist Church, they will have their annual handbell concert in the afternoon. Something new here at St. Columbus is coming shortly, and an invitation for anybody who wants to sign up for dinner and fellowship with other members of St. Columbus, dinners for six. And there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex. We invite you to sign up, and you will get information about how and when we start later in June. And then there's information about the Ventura County Interfaith uh, Community that is holding an important um, program, and there's information about that, and a reminder of our newly reformed Lunch Bunch, which continues this Wednesday, May 31st. And again, we're asking for sign-ups. Also, we printed 2023 phone directories, and they are available in the office. Um, we have an important announcement from Maurice Hill. He wears many hats in this parish, like many of you, which is one of the things that is wonderful to see in this parish. Today he is wearing the hat as the chair of the search committee. Thank you. Good morning. So I want to update you on the rector's search committee's work uh, so far. And we're actively working uh, together on the team to develop interview questions and plan out the interviews, plan campus tours, and determine exactly how we're going to screen applicants. And we did meet on Zoom with Father Tom from the diocese last week. And I asked him the burning question, how many candidates do we have yet, or any? And he told us that he has received interest in our position. And I asked him how many so far, and he said he couldn't tell us. That uh, all he can say right now is that there is interest in the position. And my fellow parishioners, that's exciting news. Yes. So the position will be open for candidates to turn in applications to the di diocese. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, <laughs> until the end of June. And um, so, so the end of June, and our committee should receive the applicants from, or the applications from the diocese uh, by July 10th at the latest. Um, but we do need your help. And I'm gonna ask you to continue to pray for our search committee and to also pray for the rector candidates. We all need your prayers during this time. And we also need your help to, for us to clarify the qualities and traits of the rector that we're searching for at St. Columbus. And to do this, the search committee will hold a listening forum after Sunday service on June 4th. We'll hold a listening forum uh, June 4th, which is three weeks away. 
and we'll share with you the results of the parish survey that dealt with the qualities of the rector and then discuss and expand on those during our short meeting. So please save the date, uh, June the 4th. Uh, we hope to see everybody there and we'll have um, little flyers up and it'll be in Bob's email blast on Wednesday. It'll be in the courier uh, so you'll, and the bulletin, so you'll see it. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice. Please, as you are able, stand, join in standing for our opening hymn. My sisters and brothers, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Today's first lesson comes from Acts. Gods made of silver or of technology or of another thing are too small and limited to compare to the almighty living God. Paul teaches that idols deceive by seeming com comprehensive, but truly they are lacking. Listen now for the word of God. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of their, the places where they live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm reading today comes from Psalm 66, verses 7 through 18. Let us read it together as found in the bulletin. Bless our God. Make his voice and his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our own rights to this. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us with this and that silver and silver. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies fall over our hearts. We went through fire. That you brought us out into a place of refreshing bread. I will enter your house with the new promises, and I will be in my house, which I promised with my mouth, and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat and beef, and spoke of bread. I will give you lots of goats. Come and listen, O Lord, we fear God. And I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, I have served him. He is attending to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer. 
Our second lesson comes from 1 Peter. Suffering is the lot of humanity in a broken world, especially those who seek to disrupt the reign of evil. Taking Jesus' example, may we seek righteousness in our daily lives. Listen now for the word of God. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For God, for Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you the God, to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt, of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. 
You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because coming to you, you live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal, and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Gracious and loving God, like our Lord Jesus Christ, you have called and empowered us to a life of service. Help us to be faithful in service to ourselves, one another, and the world around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Every Easter season, we approach these lessons from the sixth week of Easter that begin to prepare us as they prepared the disciples, the early community of the church, for separation anxiety as they prepared for the departure of Jesus. In the linear timeline of our Easter season, we are about to observe the Feast of the Ascension of Jesus 40 days after Easter. At least that's one version of these biblical events. John's Gospel marches to the beat of a different drummer. In John, you will remember, Easter evening, the disciples are gathered back in the upper room. They have been deeply shaken by the events of the execution of Jesus, and they are worried that their own execution might be possible because they are his followers. And into that room filled with their own palpable fear, grief, and confusion, Christ appears, and his first words are, Peace be with you. And then, as John tells the story, Jesus says, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus says to us today, Find and live in God's peace. Receive God's Holy Spirit that empowers you for service and go out into God's world in service to that world. This is our call every day. Be in God's peace, be in God's spirit, and be in God's service. As I think about these disciples who gathered in the upper room that night, filled with fear and uncertainty, they are somewhat confused and worried about what the future will look like. And we hear them say, I will, Jesus say, I will not leave you orphaned. The Father will give you another advocate, the Holy Spirit, to be with you forever. These are meant to be words of assurance and comfort. But they can't help but wondering and having questions. What was their future going to look like? How was this new future going to work? Were the disciples up to the task? Similarly, I imagine that St. Columbus, during this time of transition, as we prepare and undergo our rector search, is asking similar questions. What is our future going to look like? How is the future going to work? Are we up to the task? Fifty years from now, what will a parish historian write about this next chapter in the life of St. Columbus? 
Will St. Columbus be the same way that it is now? Will St. Columbus become smaller and frailer? Or will St. Columbus become something new and living and alive and thriving? None of us knows the answers to these questions. We can hope, pray, and work that St. Columbus will become something new and thriving, but we just don't know. We can hope and pray and work that St. Columbus will grow and attract families, but we just don't know. Roman Catholic Sister Mary McGlone reflects in our readings from the Gospel of John this morning and gives us our marching orders, our focus. She gives us the only focus we have control over, and here is what she says. In the long run, the promises Jesus made us, his invitation into union with God through Christ, are not about us. That union, the grace of baptism, the communion of the Eucharist, um, are, are all for the sake of mission. That is the Christian understanding of the commandment we hear Jesus speak to the disciples, the commandment to love God and to love our neighbor. The deeper our love for others, the more passionate we will be for their good. The more we will want to communicate our reason for hope, she says, and the more we will be open to hear theirs, knowing that God is not bound by structures or denominations, but God is a free spirit who blows in whom and where she will. Jesus says today, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. These commandments are more than a list of do's and don'ts. The commandments are all summed up in love of God, love of self, and love of other. A missional church is a church that serves its community and the community around them. A missional church is described by Matthew with this vision of service. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. If St. Columbus continues to build on your service to one another and the larger community, there is no guarantee about the future outcome for St. Columbus. But you are following Jesus. That's all you can do. Pray, hope, and follow Jesus. If your new rector asks you to walk more deeply out in service to the world, will you go with her or him? This is the call of the Spirit. This is the call of the missional church to take on the systems of injustice that destroy God's dream for us and for God's world. This call asks for our ongoing conversion of life as individuals and as a congregation to let go of things that keep us from the fullness of life and to grow in God's compassion, mercy, peace, and love. So the question is, what does this letting go and taking on look like? What does it mean to let go of things that do not satisfy us so that we can take on things that bring fulfillment and purpose and meaning to our lives. And for that, I turn to another sister, perhaps better known, Joan Chittister, who writes these words about a 21st vision of Matthew's Gospel 
for what these challenging words and questions mean for us. What, is it, what are we asked to let go of? And what are we asked to take on? She writes about our world today in the 21st century. Our world exploits. It breaks the backs of sugar workers. It destroys farm workers. It wipes out the working person. It discards the middle-aged and forgets the elderly. We can minister to the world by calling for justice. Our world dominates and is selfish and has its own goals as the inner force of its life. We can be community. We can say by our lives that there are times when it is important for us to step back in life so that others can gain. This world depends on power. We can practice the power of the powerless, who show us all that how little it really takes to live, how rich life is without riches, how strong are those who cannot be owned, how clear is the gospel about the rights of the poor. We can be the voice of those who are not heard and the hands of those who have no bread, and the families of those who are alone, and the strength of those who are weak. We can be the sign of human community. Finally, this world is anxious, angry, and noisy. We can be contemplative. In the midst of chaos, if the scripture is in our hearts, if we are faithful to this scripture, the word of life, if we build the Jesus life in our souls, we can see God where God is. God is everywhere. The world exploits. We can minister to the world by calling for justice. The world dominates and is selfish. We can step back in life so that others can gain. This world depends on power that dominates. We can be the voice of those who are not heard and the hands of those who have no bread and the families of those who are alone and the strength of those who are weak. We can be the sign of true human community. The world is angry, anxious, and noisy. If we build the Jesus life in our own souls, we can see God where God is, because God is everywhere. If we are faithful to those things, and it is impossible to be truly and perfectly and fully faithful. But if those are our aims or our goals day by day, regardless of the outcome, you are being faithful to God, you are being faithful to, the, to one another, and you are being faithful to the world that God entrusts into your care. As you are able, please join me in standing for our affirmation of faith. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of the one God, maker and sustainer of earth, sea, and sky, born of Mary's womb, faithful to the God of Abraham and Sarah, and proclaim and serve the poor, and proclaim heaven on earth condemned by the religious, crucified by the state. He died but transformed even death and rose to life everlasting. 
He blessed the disciples with his Holy Spirit and sent them forth east and west, north and south. We commit ourselves to Jesus, to one another as sisters and brothers, and to his mission in the world, in the grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Service continues with prayers of the people. We offer our prayers and thanksgivings to God, who in the midst of our trials and adversities gives us the faith to endure. Responding, hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the holy commandments of the Lord's truth, and Jesus' eternal gift of love, that we may follow them as pathways to sanctification, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. That we may be a community of joyous believers, bearing one another's burdens, forgiving each other's sins, responding to the needs of all, so that the world may see and know that all things are being made new through the risen one. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for this Eucharistic meal, where Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us and invites us to share in heaven's feast, let us pray. that we may give honor to those considered least in our society, knowing that Jesus reveals the divine will through their lives and in the course of their abiding lawfulness. Let us pray. That children may receive a full measure of food, education, parental love, and a religious upbringing. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for those who volunteer their time for the ministry of Christ in this church, in our diocese, and throughout the world. Let us pray. As adopted children of Jesus, through our passage in the waters of baptism, let us continue our prayers and thanksgiving for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the church, for our bishops, Justin, Michael, and John, for St. Columbus, the Threshold Project, our Children's Learning Center, our Project Hope Food Ministries, our clergy, staff, vestry, and rector search committee. We pray for those with immediate needs. Blake, Westlake High School, Darlene, Ivan, Amanda, Brianna, Nenny, Andrew, Hank, Meg, Allison, John, Jill, Norma, Christy, Louise, Jameson, Dick, Bruce, Morgan, Karina, John, Chris, James, Emily, Michael, Patricia, Timothy, Jillian, Dory, Candace, Melissa, Maggie, Robbie, Dick, and Schuyler. And we pray for those who need our continuing prayers whose names are listed in the bulletin. We pray for the world, for peace in the Middle East and all troubled areas of the world, especially Ukraine and Russia. We pray for those serving at home and abroad, 
particularly Jesse, Liam, Simon, Matthew, Matt, Nathan, Jonah, Noah, DeLondon, and Marty. We give thanks for the flowers on the high altar which are given to the glory of God by Gail and Maurice Hill in thanksgiving for their many blessings and in honor of their 15th wedding anniversary. You may offer your own prayers and petitions at this time, either silently or aloud. We pray for all of our mothers, and we pray for all who have recently lost mothers for strength and comfort. Lord Jesus, you have promised to be with us forever. Teach us to rejoice in your presence. Free us from all anxiety. Help us to know you are always at hand, that we may work with you and do your glory. Jesus, our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the welcoming prayer. Holy Spirit within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at St. Columbus. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in our warmth of your love. Help us to perceive their needs and give us wisdom to respond, knowing each person crossing our threshold is sent by you to enrich our lives. Most of all, O oh God, let this be a place where all your children are embraced and accepted. In the name of the child you sent to be our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, do we have any um, anniversaries and birthdays to celebrate? Oh, I see an anniversary walking on my way. And a birthday? Or, yeah. We'll wait for our other two. Gail and Maurice. Yes, they are traveling on a well-deserved vacation, so we will send them with traveling mercies that they will return to us safely. You have to return. <laughs> you can't just go. Okay, was that gentle enough? Yeah. Okay. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, passive understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, blessings. Blessings and traveling mercy. Blessings. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning again. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to a delightful new addition to our ministry team here at St. Columbus. Jenna, would you stand so we can welcome you? This is just the first day, and we look forward to sharing ministry with you more days ahead. Good. If you, um, just a reminder that we gather for fellowship and coffee hour in the parish hall following the service. I hope you will join us. If you want to know more about us as a congregation and you're visiting, um, there is a guest book in the narthex, the room just outside of this. Um, and if you give us your name and information, I will be in touch with you in the days ahead. But most especially, we want you to know that wherever you are in your journey of faith, that you are welcome to share with us as we all are invited to come forward and gather around God's table. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering of goodness and wisdom.
As you are able, please join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanks and praise fill our hearts, O God, for you are the Lord of creation and new creation, of covenant and new covenant. You brought forth your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land, and you brought your son from the depth of death to the glory of resurrection life. And so we gladly thank you with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending praise. and gladness are your song redeeming God for in your conquest of death we see the destiny of every hope in you come among us in the power of your Holy Spirit that your children may be blessed with power and grace and that this bread and cup may become for us the body and blood of your son Jesus Christ who at the supper with his disciples took bread gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After, sup after supper, he took the cup and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hope and glory are our breath, merciful God, for you have rolled away the stone of despair the stone of oppression, the stone of lament, the stone of grief, the stone of death, the stone of sin, the stone of fear. Come and stand among us and breathe on us your eternal life. Let all who labor, all who stumble, all who hunger, and all who fall shall meet you in the breaking of the bread and be lifted up by your touch. Shape your church to be your risen body. Make our scars beautiful like your scars. Make our lives life-giving like your life. And make our communion holy with your saints until you come again in glory and we eat with you in your kingdom. Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, ever one God. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. As we distribute Holy Communion to the congregation here, we invite those on the live stream to offer the prayer of spiritual communion.
As you are able, please join me in standing for prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May God bless you and empower you with the Holy Spirit to be God's servants in God's world. And this we pray in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.